Good morning, guys. So I am back on to share a dream that I had recently. Uh, the Lord has been on my heels to share this dream. So, you know, I know it was for me, but I also know that it's for you guys, too, or at least for those that it's for. OK, and I just pray that it reaches the ears of those that it needs to reach at its right proper time. Um, I also have a scripture that he wants me to read with you guys this morning. So I'm going to do that as well. But I think what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and share this dream with you. Uh, he gave me part of the interpretation while I was dreaming. And then when I woke up, he continued to speak to me about it. But for the last several days now, I had not shared it. I have just been like a lot of things have been going on. So I haven't had the time to record this video. So I'm doing it now. Okay. So let's go ahead and get into this dream really quick. And then we'll get into the scripture. We'll talk about what the dream meant and all that kind of stuff. Okay. So in this particular dream, I had appeared in this big, beautiful house. I mean, the house was beautiful. Okay. Um, and it, you know, it just, I was going, I entered into the house and I was going from room to room, kind of, you know, taking a look at it, looking at this room, admiring the, the decorations and the beauty of, you know, each room that I walked through. And I walked into, um, one particular room that was, you know, a person that I had grown up with. It was her room. And, um, you know, rooms represent like personal space, um, they're like a, a space of privacy, basically. You know, people don't generally let you come. When you visit people's homes, they don't generally let you come past maybe the living room, maybe the back, you know, outside. I mean, unless you're like family, you know, it may be certain situations where your family members may come in your room. But generally speaking, for the most part, you know, people don't really let people into those places like their rooms. It's very personal, very private. So I walked into her room and then when I walked into her room, I saw cameras like uh, hidden cameras, almost like, you know, they were like in different little locations in her room. And so immediately when I saw the camera, you know, come on and I saw the, you know, I knew that she was watching me or somebody was watching me on the other end. The dream shifted to her driving in her car. So she was the, the person that was in the dream. She was driving in her car and she instantly saw me in her room. But when she saw me in her room, she wasn't frantic. She was like, what is she? She, she wasn't like, what is she doing there? Blah, blah, blah. She didn't do any of that. She just continued to drive on um, her route to get to her home, to her house. Now, this person that I'm talking about is a friend of mine that I grew up with from elementary. Did we go to... I want to say we did middle school together too. I know we did um, elementary and middle school. We never fell out. We were never on bad terms throughout the course of my years of living. I want to say in my younger years, we kind of hooked back up and hanged out. And a couple of times we hung out and stuff like that. And um, I just remember, you know, her mother being super duper spiritual when I would visit her house and her mama was one of the mothers who did not play. Um, she was just, you know, like, you know, you're not going to play this music. You're not going to do this. And I always respected her mother growing up when I would visit her home. And it was just her mother was really, she was deep into the Lord. Okay. And so she saw me coming um, to her. She knew I was in her house. And so she continued on her route to her house. Um, and when she got there, it was like I instantly shifted from being in her house into her car and her son was there and I talked to her son briefly. Uh, I think he was inside the house and we were talking briefly. It was kind of odd to me. Like I'm just in your house and we ain't talked in years and I just, I'm in your home. And um, so then, you know, son's talking to me. He likes me. We're hitting it off. We're talking. It's a young kid. I mean, the child might have been about 14 to 15 would, would it appeared in the dream. And um, I know she may have children at this point that is like my, my oldest daughter's age uh, around in their, in their 20s or late 20s or something like that. I'm pretty sure of that. And um, so when she got to her house, 
I kind of came down the stairs and I hopped in the car and we started driving. And as we're driving, she looked frantic, like full of anxiety. Uh, we were not even talking. It was like we were talking in our spirit, so to speak, but we weren't verbally talking at one point. And then out of nowhere, I started to hear myself telling her, make a left, make a right, turn here, go straight, go. Cause she was looking like, you know, I'm lost. I don't know what to do. I don't know where I'm going. I'm just lost. And so I kind of walked her through how to get to where she needed to go. And so this is what the Lord was uh, sharing with me concerning the dream. Okay. A lot of people uh, we're about to have uh, run-ins with people that we knew from our past, okay? Uh, whether they were from elementary or middle school, we're going to run into people that we knew from our past, okay? Um, we actually have been around them. We've been around them in our life. We spent time growing up, uh, going to their homes, going to their houses. We knew their families. I mean, a lot of these people we weren't even on bad terms with, um, but we're going to run into these people and the Lord is going to use us um, to bring them closer to him, to bring them to directly to him. OK, uh, these people are more than likely going to have a knowledge that we're coming, whether it be through dreams or some type of way. God is going to reveal to them that something's going to happen and that we're going to come into their lives. Well, when I entered her car, it was almost like she was at peace. She was at peace. Like she had, she was full of anxiety when I got in and stressed out and all that kind of stuff. But once I entered in her car, she became very at peace and I was able to lead her and direct her into where she needed to go. And as we're driving, the more I'm talking, the more she became relaxed. She became at ease as she got to where she needed to go. OK, so um, a lot of people, you know, they it may look a certain way, like things are so wonderful or so well, you know, what I'm saying so well put together because her house was beautiful, but eternally it was like she was going through something. So you may be dealing with people who have everything going for them, everything you would think going for them. OK, the nice car, the nice house, this and that and the third. But eternally, they're going through things. They're going through things where they're going to need assistance and help uh, through whatever personal conflict or struggles or whatever it is that they're going through. OK, and that is why I was there to help guide her to where she needed to go. And as I guided her to that place where she needed to be, she became peaceful. She became calm. Um, just, just smiling and talking and everything, the whole thing shifted. Okay. So God's just saying, be prepared to come across these people from your past, because there are people that are going to enter back into our lives and they're going to come in needing direction and guidance from us. And we just need to be prepared to be used by him in order to assist these people and, you know, their relationship with God and getting close to him. Okay. So let's get into the scripture that he gave me Ecclesiastics three, and I'm reading from the amplified version. And it reads, there is a season, a time appointed for everything and a time for every delight and event or purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search and a time to give up as lost, a time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear apart and a time to sew together. A time to keep silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. What profit is there for the worker from that in which he labors? I have seen the task which God has given to sons of men with which to um, excuse me, accompany them themselves. Let me see, guys. Should I go any further down? Um, I think I'm going to stop there, guys. Or should I? I don't know. Mm -mm. Mm. 
No, I thought I'm gonna keep going. All right, God. Uh, ooh, okay, here we go. I'm gonna keep going. All right, I'm not gonna stop because it's a little lengthy. Let me just keep going like I feel the Lord telling me to do, guys. Okay, so we're on verse 11 now. He has made everything beautiful and appropriate in its time. He has also planted eternity, a sense of divine purpose in the human heart, a, myster a mysterious longing which nothing under the sun can satisfy except God. Ooh, that's good. Yet man cannot find out, comprehend, grasp what God has done. His overall plan from the beginning to the end. I know that there is nothing better for them to rejoice and to do good as long as they live. And also that every man should eat and drink and see and enjoy the good of his labor. It is the gift of God. I know that whatever God does, it endures forever. Nothing can be added to it, nor can anything be taken from it. For God does it so that men will fear and worship him with all filled reverence, knowing that he is God. That which is, has already been and that which will be has already been. For God seeks what has passed by so that history repeats itself. Moreover, I have seen under the sun that in the place of justice, there is wickedness. And in the place of righteousness, there is wickedness. I said, to, I said to myself, God will judge both the righteous and the wicked, for there is a time appointed for every matter and for every deed. I said to myself regarding the sons of men, God is surely testing them in order for them to see that by themselves without God, they are only animals. For the earthly fate of the sons of men and the fate of animals is the same. As one dies, so dies the other. Indeed, they all have the same breath and there is no preeminence of advantage for man in and of himself over an animal for all his vanity. All go to the same place. All came from dust and all returned to dust. Who knows if the spirit of man ascends upward and the spirit of the animal descends downward to the earth. So I have seen that there is nothing better than that a man should be happy in his own works and activities for that is his portion share for who will bring him back to see what will happen after he is gone. So guys, look, there's an appointed time for everything. There's an appointed time for everything, guys, for every single thing that happens under the sun. There's an appointed time for this thing to happen. OK, so this connections that you're going to have soon, um, I'm hearing the Lord saying right now, even in a matter of months, there's going to be connections with people that you're going to make from your past where he's going to use you as a guiding light to guide people out of the things that they have been going through. Okay. So, um, let God use you, let God use you. Okay. And it's not going to be a tug of war. You're not going to have to fight with these people, these certain people that are coming, that's coming back into your life. You're not going to have to fight with them because they're going to have a, a insight or knowledge already that you're coming. God is going to prepare their hearts for you. So when you get in, they may be driving, but you're going to be guiding them as they're driving. Okay. You're going to be guiding them. You're going to be like that inner light, that voice for other people in the darkness to guide them into the Lord's light. Okay, so I don't know who this message is for. I pray it's helped somebody. Um, I'm thankful that I finally was able to get up here and share this with you guys today. I sincerely do miss sharing dreams with you guys. And I've had a lot of them. I just haven't been sharing a lot of stuff, right? So I'm only going to share what God allows me to share, to be honest with you, especially at this particular time right now. But please like, comment, share, and subscribe to this YouTube channel. And I will catch you guys soon on another message, okay? God bless. Bye.